A cutter is a form of a fastball that moves away from the pitcher's arm side as it approaches home plate. Pitchers throw the cutter by altering their grip on the baseball. When used correctly, a cutter can be very challenging for hitters to square up for good contact. Although each pitcher throws their cutter differently and gets different results. In this video, I created a model to determine what the perfect cutter is. When researching the data on cutters, I found a correlation between the speed in miles per hour, total movement in inches, and whiff rate, which is the number of swings and misses divided by pitches swung at. Using total movement and velocity as independent variables and whiff percentage as a dependent variable, I was able to create a model to predict the success rate of cutters. If you are unsure of how I got to this point and want to know more details on why this model works and is statistically significant, check out my website in the description for more details. But anyways, let's continue to the results. The model made the following equation, 0 0.950 times the miles per hour of the cutter plus 0.799 times the total movement in inches of the cutter minus 84.266 gets us the expected whiff percentage on each pitch. To show how this equation works, we will use Corbin Burns as an example since he threw the most cutters in the MLB in 2022. Corbin's cutter was 95.1 miles per hour, so we will put that into the equation in the miles per hour spot. His cutter had 23 inches of total break, so that will also go into the equation. And then once it is solved, we get an expected whiff percentage of 24.256. This is similar to Corbin Burns' actual whiff percentage, which was 27.8%. Because Corbin Burns' actual whiff percentage is higher than his expected whiff percentage, it can be inferred from the data that Burns' whiff percentage will go down over a larger sample closer to the 24.25% number, but overall it is relatively close. From the equation, we also learn that for every mile per hour and inch added to a cutter, the expected whiff percentage goes up. This data can be very useful for pitchers as they work on improving their pitch in the offseason. Now, let us take a look at the results for the rest of the league and see who has the best cutter in the MLB. The top five pitchers in expected whiff percentage last season were... Sony Gray with a 36.75% expected whiff percentage on cutters. Number two was Framber Valdez with a 33.41% expected whiff percentage on cutters. Number three was Brian Baker at 31.02%. Number four was Spencer Howard at 30.57%. And number five was Yu Darvish at 29.52%. Now that we know the leaders and how to get this equation, let's take a look at which pitchers should throw their cutter more and less. First, I believe that Sony Gray should throw his cutter more. He had a 36.75 expected whiff percentage on his cutter, but he only throws his cutter 9.1% of the time. Sony Gray is interesting because he used to throw his cutter, but then stopped using it in 2019 and 2020, and then started throwing his cutter again in 2021. Sony might not realize how good his cutter actually is, and he might not feel comfortable using it yet, but Sony Gray has the best combination of speed and movement on his cutter in the whole MLB, and he should start utilizing it more. Next, Luis Severino should throw his cutter more. It had a 28.62 expected whiff percentage, but he only throws his cutter 5.84% of the time. This number should definitely go up for Luis Severino. Also, maybe Framber Valdez should throw his cutter more. His cutter had a 33.41 expected whiff percentage, but he only threw his cutter 10.3% of the time. All of Framber's pitches are really good, so I wouldn't change much, but it definitely wouldn't hurt him to throw the cutter more because this is one of his best pitches. Finally, Adam Adovino had a 25.35 expected whiff percentage on his cutter, but he only throws his cutter 5.2% of the time. Adovino's expected whiff percentage on his cutter is higher than his actual whiff percentage on his fastball and sinker, and he throws his fastball and sinker significantly more than his cutter. I think that Adovino, as he gets older, should transition to throwing his cutter more than the fastball and sinker. Let's look at the opposite and which pitchers should throw their cutter less. First, Jesse Chavez should throw his cutter less. 
Jesse Chavez has a 19.07 expected whiff percentage on his cutter, and he throws his cutter 58.5% of the time, more than half the time he's throwing his cutter. Chavez's actual whiff percentage on his cutter was around 30%, so he might have saw this number and thought he had a really good cutter, but it turns out that he's actually gotten pretty lucky on his cutters, and this is an unsustainable number over time, where he should try and look at using his off-speed pitches a little bit more than his cutter. Next, David Robertson should throw his cutter less. His cutter had an expected whiff percentage of 16.3%, and he throws his cutter 50.6% of the time. Robertson's other two pitches have far better whiff percentages than his cutter is expected to have. His cutter used to be elite, but as he got, has gotten older, he should rely on his other pitches more. Finally, we have Kenley Jansen. Jansen had a 22.7 expected whiff percentage on his cutter. He throws his cutter 63.9% of the time. He was known for years as having the best cutter in the MLB. He used to throw his cutter around 94 to 95 miles an hour and have a much higher expected whiff percentage, but now his expected whiff percentage on cutters is lower than his other pitches. He still has a good expected whiff percentage on his cutter, but it is not as elite as it used to be, and as he gets older, he should try and use his other pitches more because he's losing speed and movement on his cutter and it's not as good as it once was. In the data set, there were a few outliers. Three of the outliers were Jose Alvarado, Huscar Brazuban, and Adrian Simpson. Their actual whiff percentages were far better than their expected whiff percentage. The reason that this may be is because there was a huge difference in their fastball speed and cutter speed. All three pitchers threw their fastball about 10 miles per hour more than their cutter. This speed differential could be the reason they got so many swings and misses, since they are pitchers who do not use their cutter to power past hitters, but instead use it as a finesse pitch to keep batters off balance. Another outlier in the data was Bryce Elder. Bryce Elder had an 18.41 expected whiff percentage on cutters, but his actual whiff percentage on cutters was 6%, which was one of the worst in the MLB. He is the opposite case of the other pitchers, where his expected whiff percentage is way higher than his actual whiff percentage. When diving into this, I noticed his cutter and fastball were the same exact speed. He works the opposite as the other three pitchers and does not have a huge speed differential on his fastball and cutters, so batters can just get up to the plate and expect to see the same speed, and resulting, his cutter was not very successful. Overall, expected whiff percentage tells a story for how good a pitcher's cutter is based on speed and movement. It can be used to determine what a few inches of movement added or a speed increased could result in. Moving forward to make this stat even more precise, I am going to explore the speed differential between cutters and fastballs and see if it can be added to the equation to give less variance. If you enjoyed this analytical breakdown and would like to learn more, please check out my article. The link is in the description. I plan to make more expected whiff percentage videos for other pitches, so let me know if this is content you enjoy. Thank you all for watching and remember, trust the analytics.